All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, replacing contactors. And uh, one thing about replacing contactors is that the coil has to be rated for the same voltage um, that the original one is. And, um, and the reason being is because without the uh, correct uh, voltage, the uh, coil, it won't close. And so this right here is the coil between this point and that point right there. And you see there on the bottom, that's the uh, coil. Well, and what it does is that the, uh, when the correct voltage is going to it, it pulls in the contacts. And which normally, like on this one right here, it has a cover so you don't see that. And, uh, but that's what's in there. It's uh, your little contacts. Okay. All right. And another thing about them too is that your contacts, it has to be rated uh, the same as the OEM or greater and uh, for instance like if you have a 30 amp uh, uh, a one that's rated 30 amps then you can replace it with a 40 amp uh, but you cannot take a 40 amp and replace it with a 30 amp if you do the contacts they're going to get overheated and it causes them to burn up and so like on this box right here this one right here says uh, 30 amps and then look at this one right here that one's rated for 40 and so um, technically you could actually replace a 40 or I mean replace a 30 with a 40 but you can't do it the other way around all right another thing too is that whenever you have like the amp rating uh, so like let's say if it's rated for uh, 40 amps the uh, the contacts when they make them they're not making them for handling uh, just 40 it's actually rated up to 125 percent of the uh, rated capacity and uh, but the thing is is that if you got a continual load that's over that 40 like on a 40 amp one then eventually it's going to cause the contacts to overheat and uh, so that's why um, they're actually made at 125 percent of the rated capacity um, another thing too is that residential contactors, they carry uh, various names. Uh, you'll see a uh, single pole, and, uh, and you also see some that says uh, one and a half pole. And right there on that box is one and a half pole. And uh, then also you got some that says uh, two pole. And you can also see the amp rating, and there's a coil voltage. Well, you might be confused whenever you go and you see uh, uh, some contactors. It'll say the single pole and the other one says uh, one half pole. Well, they're actually the same. And so I draw out a diagram of something that you may see on, uh, on a unit, but those are actually the same. There's no difference. And then that's a double pole contactor in which this is a double pole. See, it's got two sets of contacts. It's got a set of contacts there and one right there. And then also this one right here, this is a two pole contactor, got two sets. And then this one right here is also a two pole contactor, whereas this one is a single pole. And so you can tell the difference, like on this diagram, you'll see there's no set of contacts. And so this would actually stay hot the whole time that power is applied to the uh, system as long as the disconnect's turned on. And uh, this side right here, there would be power uh, at one point. And so when this contactor gets energized from your thermostat, that pulls in the contacts and completes the path and that would bring on your compressor and your condenser fan motor. All right, now, if you have uh, correct uh, voltage uh, going to the contactor and the contacts are open, then the uh, contactor is bad. And so what that means is that this one right here rated for 24 volts. And so if I had 24 volts or the Y was energized to here, this is uh, connected to your common coming back to your uh, uh, terminal strip, like uh, if it's a split unit. And uh, but either way, this say this one was common, that one's Y. If there's 24 volts and the path is complete, but this is not closed, then uh, it's bad. And one way you can tell if it's not closing is that if you take a, a voltmeter, 
say like this is voltage. And uh, so let's say um, if you read across there, that would actually show you uh, zero because it's like a tupo contactor. And actually a better example would be this one. All right, so if this right here was open and uh, you read across right here, that would say uh, 240. If this thing has uh, got correct voltage here, but that's not closing, it'll show you a potential difference. And because uh, like on this side right here, this is being all the same side, uh, that right there should never show you a potential difference. And potential difference is just a difference in the voltage from this point to that point. And so with that one again, all you gotta do is check. So if you got 240 here, and then you're not showing zero across the contacts when that's energized, then you know this is not closing. Now, another thing too is that when you look at uh, contactors, uh, you look at the uh, contacts, and uh, which right here, these are smooth, and uh, but if they're pitted, then you have to uh, go ahead and change out the contactor. And of course, you gotta get the customer's uh, permission. But if these are heavily pitted in there, if it's not good and smooth, then what's possible is that these contacts will eventually uh, end up welded shut. And a good indication of that they're welded shut is that when the, the thermostat is turned off on the inside of the house, and, uh, and but your compressor and your condenser fan motor are still running. That's always a good sign. That's it. Thanks.